Hey everybody, Marty Mazzori. Good morning, 7th of March, 2018. Yet another video commentary. Of course, this is directed specifically to clients. Wanted to go ahead and add to what we did last evening and really bring you a little deeper into to our world and share with you the document that we update every week and use internally and sometimes use in client meetings and so on. And this is where we essentially copy and paste the results of a lot of, not all of it, believe it or not, but a lot of the analyses that we do week in and week out. I thought I'd start just with this simply simple pie chart comparison we put together just to give you a feel for what we're thinking in terms of uh, the market sector by sector. Here's the S&P 500. I want to point out that technology is, is an ever-growing component of the S&P. It's beginning to rival where it was in the late 90s. We actually dialed ours down a bit from last year. But our concerns about technology, we had a huge run last year. They're going to be very sensitive to a potentially stronger dollar if the U.S. economy continues to do well and interest rates continue to go higher here. We're in the camp that says we get a steady to stronger dollar. Of course, if we get a great deal of protectionist measures, well, that's not going to bode well for the very internationally centric technology sector. So our industrials target is substantially higher than the industrials exposure in the S&P, as is our materials target. Big difference there. Industrials and materials play the global infrastructure theme, we think, quite well. The U.S., of course, is proposing to embark on a major infrastructure package. Of course, it's the industrials and materials companies that are going to do a lot of that business. Being bullish on the economy, of course, then we're not going to be heavily exposed to consumer staples. We're not going to have any uh, real estate investment trust or utilities in a higher interest rate environment. So we like our mix here. We think in the long run this is a, a better, more equitable, safer mix than what the setup would be for the S&P 500. And of course we have foreign exposure in our mix which isn't represented here and of course it's going to influence our relative results one way or the other. At the end of the day, folks, while we have to talk about indexes and benchmarks and so on when we do review meetings, we look at the S&P, we also look at the NYSE composite, which actually is a better benchmark because it's everything in the NYSE, all shapes and sizes, 1,900 stocks, 400 are foreign stocks that are traded through American depository receipts. So it's a much better look at a well-balanced portfolio. At times it outperforms the S&P, at times it underperforms. Year to date, we are handily outperforming the NYSE underperforming the S&P largely because of how well technology is done, but the year is, the year is young, of course. So I'm going to scroll through this document and I'm going to talk about its pieces, try to do it quickly, but help you understand why we are yet not ready to react to virtually anything that's showing up by way of volatility in the world, uh, because our overall longer term macro view, if you will, tells us to stay the course. And of course, we are very willing to change course, but we have to have evidence that suggests we should more than just the noise and the volatility that we're seeing right now. So taking a look at the results of our formal technical analysis, we'll call it. I showed you some other things that we do in last night's video, but this is the, the tracking of the short and long-term moving averages, their positioning, their slope, where the price is in relation to those, and then the longer term look in our own in-house indicator that we've created to overcome some false signals that this one actually brings us. When it's green, that says the long term important trend remains intact. And, that has to, and that's the case for the S&P, for financials, technologies, industrials, transportation, materials, consumer discretionary, home builders, global commodity prices, and so on. Energy is waning, which reflects our very modest single digit allocation. Healthcare is actually doing better than we thought on a longer term trend basis. Everything has broken down, of course, recently with that correction. Consumer staples, not doing well. A lot of rotation out of conservative things into cyclical things, probably performing better this morning. But U.S. telecom, utilities, real estate investment trusts, things to avoid in our view. Foreign securities, with the exception of our European hedged fund, which would hedge against a stronger dollar, weaker euro, are actually trending still very well on a long-term basis. Bonds have been miserable. We think will continue to be miserable. Gold has been holding up amazingly well. We don't think this environment is a bullish scenario for gold, but with as much uncertainty out there and so far a weaker dollar, gold's actually been held holding up quite nicely. That moving average convergence divergence, this is a very bullish signal when the white line is, is moving up ahead of the red. Weekly moving averages, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, set up very well. They set up very well at this time during the longest bull market in history. Here we were then, much further ways to go, being redundant at this point. Rollovers in the, in the weekly moving averages, 
false signals, layering on our macro index, which we're going to talk about in a second, had us staying with the market during these very tough times. Bollinger Bands showed you that last night. Looked very positive from a long-term trend when you compare them to period rough patches in the market. And then our macro index scored on Monday with a plus 62.96. The charts are telling us that the consumer remains pretty healthy. Businesses remain very healthy. General economy, save for the economic surprise indexes, economists got a little over their skis in terms of anticipation this year. So when the economy doesn't quite perform up to expectations, doesn't mean we're in recession, just means that the expectations index or the uh, surprise index is surprising to the downside. Inflation remains relatively tame. Commodity trends look okay, except for one that's showing us that we have some inflation. So our economic sub-index, still very strong. Little, little contraction from the week before. Financial stress, I like to call this our bubble index. In periods where we've had a great deal of stress and we were rolling over to bear markets, these things were bleeding red. Financial markets, real breakdown in breadth, of course, with this correction. But still a positive 33 that even the trends within financial markets, particularly the longer term trends, or I should say the, the stock markets in particular, still look pretty strong. So 62.96, I'm going to show you from a historical standpoint as we back test, is still a very robust reading. In fact, here's some back tests. So here we are going all the way back to 1999. Before the market really rolled over, you can see when we back tested, we have a negative 15, and that told us probabilities were suggesting we had some pain to come. A 29 right here in the middle as we were getting some rallies. This was telling us if we were running our system back then that we should not be buying any of these dips. But as we got in here, notice our macro view, again, plus 62, was beginning to turn green. And sure enough, that's when the market began to bottom. And we had a really nice run, really strong economy in there until even at the peak here, while we we're still making all time highs, things were really rolling over economically. And as you can see that, that real estate mortgage bubble burst when we had these rallies in here, these were not rallies to buy. Now we didn't turn green until three months or so after the bottom. So if we were really adhering to this, we would not have caught any of that, which was fine. As long as we did begin to get cyclical and, cyclical and growthy again in here, we did well. Here's a consolidation from 2010 to 2012. We had that 10% correction here, but on balance, our indicators were suggesting that this was not a recessionary environment, therefore stay the course. Really nice rally, consolidation in here. Worst start to a year in the history of the stock market. Still, our analysis was telling us to stay the course from a macroeconomic standpoint. Here we are today, here's the recent correction. Here's Monday. Um, no doubt we'll get some more breakdown, but folks, we have a long ways to go before this part of our analysis tells us that we need to start rotating to more to a more defensive posture. So today, as I speak to you this morning, it's volatility to ignore. If it changes, then we will respect it and we will uh, make changes accordingly. So folks, to cut to the chase, the illustration I've shown you a few times of late, here are the weekly moving averages. Here, here they are rolling over during bear markets. Here's the price. When we have this kind of setup, when the macro conditions are what I just illustrated for you, when the technical conditions look like this, we want to maintain a growthy asset class sector allocation until the weight of the evidence changes. And of course, we have to accept and expect volatility like we're getting right now along the way. When the conditions roll over, when the technicals roll over, when the fundamentals deteriorate, we want to move to a more defensive asset class and sector allocation. Again, until the weight of evidence changes, and in these conditions, we want to be preserving principle. That needs to be our number one objective. Right now, we just don't have these conditions, which is why we're, you're not going to see at this juncture big moves within the allocation within your portfolio. But you will see incremental moves as conditions like these and the corresponding macro conditions begin to send signals that probability suggest a greater likelihood of this versus this in the weeks and months and years to come. I'll leave it there. Once again, thank you folks always for watching and listening. We hope this helps you keep your heads about you and keep the world into perspective and much more to come. Take care. Bye-bye.